In this video, we're talking about something super important, depression. It's something that affects millions of people around the world, and it's something that we need to be talking about more. We're going to dive into the science behind it, those little changes in your brain and body that can signal something's up. Before we go any further, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. This one might seem obvious, but it's important to understand just how persistent this sadness can be. We're not talking about feeling down for a day or two, we're talking about a lingering sadness that just seems to stick around no matter what you do. Imagine a gray cloud that's always hovering overhead casting a shadow over everything you experience. That's what persistent sadness can feel like. It's that feeling that drains the joy out of things you used to love, that makes it hard to find the energy to do the things you need to do. Now, let's look at what's happening in your brain when you experience this persistent sadness. Scientists have found that certain chemicals in your brain, like serotonin and dopamine, play a big role in regulating your mood. When these chemicals are out of balance, it can lead to feelings of sadness and hopelessness. Think of it like this. Your brain is a complex network of pathways, and these chemicals are the messengers that help signals travel smoothly along those pathways. When the messengers aren't doing their job properly, the whole system gets disrupted, and your mood is one of the first things to be affected. It's important to remember that this isn't your fault. Your brain is a powerful organ, but sometimes it needs a little help to get back on track. Recognizing this persistent sadness is the first step towards getting that help. Remember those hobbies that used to light you up? The activities that made you feel alive and engaged? Well, one of the sneakier signs of depression is losing interest in those things. It's like the colors have been drained out of your world, leaving everything feeling bland and uninspiring. Imagine a record player with a needle stuck in a groove, endlessly repeating the same dull tune. That's what it can feel like to lose interest in things you once loved. The things that used to bring you joy now feel like chores, or worse, they don't even register on your radar anymore. This loss of interest can extend beyond just hobbies, too. It can affect your relationships, your work, even your own self-care. It's like a general apathy has settled in, making it difficult to find the motivation to engage with anything. Scientists believe this loss of interest is linked to the same chemical imbalances in the brain that contribute to persistent sadness. When your brain isn't producing enough of those feel-good chemicals, it becomes harder to experience pleasure and motivation. Think of it this way, your brain is like a car engine, and those feel-good chemicals are the fuel that keeps it running smoothly. When the fuel tank is low, the engine struggles to function, and you lose the energy to pursue the things that matter to you. This one hits close to home for a lot of people, and it's often misunderstood. We're not talking about the kind of tiredness you feel after a long day of work or a tough workout. This is a deeper, more pervasive fatigue that seems to seep into your bones and weigh you down no matter how much sleep you get. Imagine carrying a heavy backpack everywhere you go, even to bed. That's what fatigue can feel like when it's linked to depression. It's a constant drain on your energy, making even the simplest tasks feel like monumental efforts. Scientists have found that depression can disrupt your body's natural sleep-wake cycle, leading to poor quality sleep and leaving you feeling exhausted even after a full night's rest. This disruption can also affect your hormone levels, further contributing to feelings of fatigue. Think of it like this. Your body is like a battery that needs to be recharged regularly. When depression disrupts your sleep and hormone balance, it's like constantly draining your battery without giving it a chance to fully recharge. This fatigue can be incredibly frustrating, especially when you're trying to keep up with the demands of daily life. It's important to remember that this fatigue is not a sign of weakness, but a symptom of a deeper issue that needs to be addressed. Sleep, that beautiful, restorative escape we all need. But when depression comes knocking, sleep can become your biggest enemy. It's not just about feeling tired, it's about struggling to fall asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, or sleeping too much and still feeling exhausted. Imagine tossing and turning in bed, your mind racing with worries, unable to find that peaceful slumber. Or maybe you find yourself sleeping for hours on end yet waking up feeling just as drained as when you went to bed. These are just some of the ways sleep disturbances can manifest when you're struggling with depression. This disruption in your sleep patterns can have a ripple effect on your entire day. It can make it harder to focus, impact your mood, and even affect your physical health. It's a vicious cycle that can be incredibly difficult to break free from. Scientists believe that the chemical imbalances associated with depression can interfere with your body's natural sleep-wake cycle, making it difficult to find that sweet spot of restorative sleep. 
Think of it this way, your body's sleep-wake cycle is like a delicate dance between different hormones and brain chemicals. When depression throws off this balance, the dance becomes chaotic and uncoordinated, leading to restless nights and exhausting days. Food, it's more than just sustenance, it's a source of pleasure, connection, and comfort. But when depression sets in, your relationship with food can change dramatically. You might find yourself losing interest in food altogether, forgetting to eat, or eating far more than usual as a way to cope with emotional distress. Imagine your appetite as a dial that's been thrown off kilter. For some, depression turns the dial way down, leading to a loss of appetite and unintentional weight loss. For others, it cranks the dial up, leading to increased cravings and potential weight gain. These changes in appetite are not just about physical hunger, they're deeply connected to the emotional turmoil that comes with depression. Food can become a source of comfort or a way to numb emotional pain, leading to unhealthy eating patterns. Scientists have found that the same brain chemicals that regulate mood also play a role in controlling appetite. When these chemicals are out of balance, it can lead to significant shifts in your eating habits. Think of it this way, your brain and your gut are in constant communication, sending signals back and forth about hunger, satiety, and pleasure. When depression disrupts this communication, your appetite can become unpredictable and difficult to manage. While we often think of depression and anxiety as separate issues, they often go hand in hand. Anxiety is like that constant feeling of unease, that knot in your stomach that just won't go away. It can make you feel restless, agitated, and on edge, like you're always waiting for something bad to happen. Imagine a pot of water simmering on the stove, always threatening to boil over. That's what anxiety can feel like a constant state of anticipation and worry that can make it hard to relax or focus on anything else. This anxiety can manifest in many different ways, racing thoughts, physical tension, difficulty concentrating, and even panic attacks. It can feel like your mind is stuck in overdrive, constantly generating worst-case scenarios. Scientists believe that the same neurochemical imbalances that contribute to depression also play a role in anxiety. When your brain's stress response system is out of whack, it can lead to a heightened sense of fear and worry. Think of it this way. Your brain's stress response system is like a smoke detector that's overly sensitive. It's constantly going off, even when there's no real fire, leading to a constant state of alarm and unease. You know that feeling when everything and everyone seems to get on your nerves? That short fuse, that quickness to anger or frustration? That's irritability, and it's a common companion to depression. It's like a layer of sandpaper has been placed over your interactions with the world, making everything feel rough and grating. Imagine a simmering pot of water that's constantly on the verge of boiling over. That's what irritability can feel like, a hair-trigger temper that can erupt with little provocation. This irritability can affect your relationships, your work, and even your own sense of self. It can make you withdraw from others, lash out at loved ones, or feel constantly on edge. Scientists believe that this irritability is linked to the same brain chemical imbalances that contribute to other depression symptoms. When your brain's emotional regulation system is disrupted, it can make it harder to control your reactions to stress and frustration. Think of it this way. Your brain's emotional regulation system is like a thermostat that's been set too high. It's constantly overreacting to even minor fluctuations in your emotional environment, leading to outbursts of anger or frustration. This is one of the most painful and insidious symptoms of depression. It's that deep-seated belief that you're not good enough, that you're a failure, a burden to others. It's like a dark cloud of self-doubt that hangs over everything you do, whispering negative thoughts in your ear. Imagine looking in the mirror and seeing a distorted reflection, a version of yourself stripped of all value and worth. That's what feelings of worthlessness can do. They chip away at your self-esteem, making it hard to see your own strengths and accomplishments. These feelings can be incredibly isolating, making you withdraw from others and avoid situations where you might feel exposed or judged. It can become a self-fulfilling prophecy as you start to believe the negative thoughts and act in ways that reinforce them. Scientists believe that these feelings of worthlessness are linked to the same brain chemical imbalances that contribute to other depression symptoms. When your brain's reward system is disrupted, it can make it harder to experience pleasure and feel good about yourself. Think of it this way. Your brain's reward system is like a garden that needs nurturing and care. When depression takes over, it's like neglecting that garden, letting weeds grow and choke out the beautiful flowers of self-worth and confidence. This is the most serious and frightening symptom of depression, and it's crucial to address it with the utmost urgency. 
Thoughts of death or suicide are not just fleeting thoughts. They are a sign that the pain of depression has become unbearable, that the individual sees no other way out. Imagine being trapped in a dark, suffocating room with no windows and no doors. That's what suicidal thoughts can feel like, a desperate attempt to escape from unbearable pain and suffering. These thoughts can range from passive thoughts of death, such as I wish I could just disappear, to active thoughts of suicide, such as I want to end my life. It's important to remember that any thought of suicide is a serious red flag that requires immediate attention. If you or someone you know is experiencing thoughts of death or suicide, please reach out for help immediately. Call a crisis hotline, talk to a trusted friend or family member, or seek professional help from a therapist or psychiatrist. Remember, you are not alone. There is help available, and there is hope for recovery. Woo, we covered a lot today. Remember, if any of these warning signs resonated with you, it's so important to reach out for help. Talking to a trusted friend, family member, or mental health professional can make a world of difference. Did you find this video helpful? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you're on a journey to better health, both mentally and physically, I've got something that might help. Check out the calorie and protein calculator in the description below. It's a great tool for tracking your fitness journey. And before you go, thank you so much for watching our video and please make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you're struggling to quit porn addiction, watch the video on your screen next. Remember, taking care of yourself is a marathon, not a sprint. Let's keep the conversation going, support each other, and keep moving forward together.